quite a savage looking integral we have here on the channel. And the structure of the integrand hints towards a substitution. And that substitution is letting x squared equal to u, which further implies that 2x dx equals du. You see, we have the ingredients for the differential element. All that's missing is a factor of 2. And to balance that out, we need a factor of 1 by 2 outside the integral as well. So this implies that i is in fact 1 half the integral still from 0 to 1, as the limits of integration are clearly not bothered by our transformation. And this 2x dx thing turns into a new differential element du. We now have the logarithm of u to the 1 half divided by u squared plus u plus 1. Okay, cool. And of course, this exponent can be written as a coefficient using the properties of the logarithm. So we have 1 half times 1 half. So all of this implies that i equals a quarter of the integral from 0 to 1 of log u du divided by u squared plus u plus 1 which does look like an interesting structure, but how exactly do we tackle the problem from here? Well, it's the denominator that provides some motivation. u squared plus u plus 1 is one of the factors of a very nice, very cute binomial. So I'm going to try to convert the structure to something involving that binomial. How exactly am I going to do that? Well, First things first, I just rewrite the integral. Yeah, I'm just going to rewrite the exact problem we have. We have a quarter of the integral from 0 to 1 of log u divided by u squared plus u plus 1 du. And yes, that is an awkward amount of space I've left. But that awkward amount of space is to accommodate for a useful factor. That is 1 minus u. So expanding using 1 minus u, we immediately recognize that what you have in the denominator now is just 1 minus u cubed. So this implies that i equals a quarter of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus u times log u divided by 1 minus u cubed du. And this is a nice structure to have. It's a nice structure because it's a lot simple. It's a lot more simple in comparison to what we started off with. And I can make better use of it using a substitution that is letting this u cubed thing equal t, which implies that u equals t to the one third. And this further implies that du equals one third times t to the negative two thirds dt. So we can write our integral i as a quarter of the integral still from zero to one, Again, the limits are not bothered whatsoever. And we have 1 minus t to the 1 third. Log u turns into log t to the 1 third. We're dividing by 1 minus t, and the differential element transforms into dt by 3 times t to the 2 thirds. Alrighty then. Again, using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this one third as a coefficient. It'll be multiplied by this factor of one by four outside. And we also have another factor of one by three inside. So we have one third times one third, that's one ninth times one by four is one by 36 times the integral from zero to one of one minus t to the one third times log t divided by t to the two thirds times 1 minus t. Now, a good option would be to expand using t to the negative 2 thirds. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So expanding using t to the negative 2 thirds, we get rid of the factor in the denominator, one of the factors anyway. And in the numerator, we have t to the negative two-thirds minus t to the negative one-thirds all times log t 
divided by 1 minus t dt. And now I'm going to invoke the linearity of the integration operator and write this as the sum of a couple of integrals. The first one is the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the negative 2 thirds times log t divided by 1 minus t dt minus integral from 0 to 1 t to the negative 1 thirds log t dt divided by 1 minus t. And now we have a new problem on our hands, and that is evaluating these two new integrals. Finding them out will solve all our problems, but the question is how? How are we going to evaluate these two really cool looking integrals? Well, there's a very cool, very special function that has this really, really nice integral representation that will do the trick. And I'm talking about a fan favorite, the digamma function. So digamma z plus 1. And speaking of z, I recently started a second channel on which I'm going to be teaching formal courses. And I'm starting off with complex analysis. So do check that out. I'm trying my best to create a really cool, useful complex analysis playlist. Link in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the like and subscribe buttons here too. Anyway, so digamma z plus 1 equals negative order mascheroni constant plus an integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the z divided by 1 minus x dx. And I know what you're thinking. This does not have a log term in it. But we can introduce a log term by differentiating under the integral sign with respect to the parameter z. So on differentiation, the digamma function turns into the trigamma function. That's psi sub 1 of z plus 1. And here we're left with the integral from 0 to 1. Negative sign x to the z times log x divided by 1 minus x dx. So we see for the first integral, all we need is z equal to negative 2 thirds. And here we need z equal to negative 1 third. And this implies that i equals 1 by 36 times negative trigamma uh, z equal to 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds plus 1 is just 1 third. OK, cool. Plus tri gamma 2 thirds, right? And this implies that i equals 1 by 36. We have the tri gamma function at 2 thirds minus the tri gamma function at 1 third, which is a pretty awesome looking result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.